Okay, so today in Microsoft Flight Simulator we're going to look at Autopilot in the Beechcraft Model 18. So if we go and jump in, we'll get it in the air and then we'll have a play with some of the Autopilot settings. So we'll remove the yoke just to get started. First things first, let's get the, um, the fuel mixtures levers thrown all the way forwards. Make sure the cowl flaps are open, which means they're pulled up to make sure they're open. Um, prop is on max RPM already. We open the throttles to about 5% maybe. We turn on the power switches, we turn on the generators, we turn on the magnetos over here and then we open the cover on the engine starter, we go for the right engine first and we hit the booster pump and we can zoom out to do this and we can hit the starter button. And there it goes. And then turn the booster off. Okay, and then we look across to the other engine and we go left engine and we hit the booster and we hold the starter button in and let go and then turn the booster off and close the lid. I think does this have a central set? Yeah, it does have a central setting on the starter, which will put it back in the centre. OK, we'll turn the pitot heat on. We will also go and turn on the beacon lights. And we should be pretty much ready to go. Uh, nav lights we want to be on flashing. We could have them on steady as well. OK, um, right, let's go and get this thing in the air. Notice we didn't prime the engine. This looks like you don't have to. So it's, it's not the most tremendously important. So we're going to turn on the avionics now. So we get all the systems have fired up. OK, uh, we'll turn on the transponder, even though we're not going to use it, just so it's we haven't got that blank patch in the middle of the cockpit. And we'll go and get in the air. So if you're wondering where the autopilot controls are and the Model 18, you've got this control here which does roll heading, altitude and pitch. And over here, behind the mixture knobs, you've also got another knob on the fascia that's been retrofitted in that gives you nav, omni bearing indicator and heading, lo localizer and reverse. So let's go and try some of those out. So we're going to come off the parking brake and we're rolling. Remember we were at 5% throttle already. So we're going to taxi out at... We're at Booker Airfield in Buckinghamshire on the edge of High Wycombe. So we'll just taxi out and then we'll have a play with the autopilot. Let's go and have a look outside. See how we're looking. Getting a bit fast. Full throttle, drop the flaps to take off position. Yeah, to ignore this stall warning until we're in the air so I can sit back down now and rotate. Mind the trees. Gear up, flaps up, and trim the aircraft down as we release back pressure on the stick. So there we go, we can now let go of the controls. Just begin a gentle left turn. So it's interesting in the Model 18, you can look up through this quarter window to get a better idea if you were in VFR conditions. Looks like we're not going to get it today, but I typically fly with live weather, so we're going to see, you know, you're seeing exactly what I'm seeing. We're not going to be able to cheat at all. OK, so autopilot time. Let's turn on the autopilot and see what it does. 
So we've switched it on, and it's basically maintaining roll at the moment. It's doing nothing about pitch. So it's, it's just levelled the aircraft down, yeah? Flying nice and level. Now, if we wanted to fly a particular heading, if we spin the mark around on the the main navigation instrument, this is like a combined compass, CDI, uh, nav radio, all in one. So at the moment we're flying, you can see 150 degrees, or about 145 degrees. And that's where 120 is. So if we go heading mode, look what's happening to the aircraft. It's turning. This is quite cool that we're above the clouds now, so we get a nice backdrop for our various manoeuvres we're going to be doing. So I'm going to now press altitude hold. Notice the vertical speed now is going to dip back down and then it will level itself back out. I'm going to pull the throttles back as well, because we don't need to be going quite so fast now in climb, not climbing anymore. So you can see it takes a while to do it, but the vertical speed is coming out towards zero. So we're at the altitude we were at when we flicked altitude hold. The next one down here is pitch mode. So say we wanted to carry on climbing up to 5,000 feet. We could go to pitch mode and we can roll this down a bit and we can do it to manoeuvre this needle, basically, by controlling the pitch of the aircraft. There's an element of um, adjustment required in this, because obviously as the speed comes down as you're climbing, unless you introduce more power, then you're going to lower speed and your vertical speed... What you're not controlling vertical speed, you're controlling pitch. Yeah, that's the secret to this. So you're going to need to keep an eye on this and keep manoeuvring this if you want to. Um, ascend or descend in a you know at a given rate okay so that's the basics of the autopilot for manual control of the autopilot so we can go to altitude hold again just before we get to 5000 feet which is fine and we can you know we can steer and we can refer to a map and we could fly 90 degrees if we wanted to and the plane will turn left to 90 and that's all well and good what if we had a flight plan programmed in so let's go and program something in over here. So flight plan, press the knob in to get the focus, and then we start keying in. So we just took off from EGTB. So we'll go and program that in while we're flying along. E. Oops. The, the inner uh, knob on the autopilot does the letters. The outer knob does the character position. E, G. So we... E, F, G, T, B is where we took off from. So normally you would do this on the ground, obviously. But we're just doing this in the air to show that you can do this. E, G, T, B. OK, so that's got our first waypoint. Oops, uh, and I've now got it twice, which is really clever of me. So let's go and select a next waypoint. Or we could do a direct two, even from where we are. But say we were originally going to fly from Wickham Air Park over to Elstree, EGTR. So we can change this to EGT, and we change this to an R. Enter. We, for we ignore this one on the end. And we can push this in again. And we should see now, if we press flight plan again, and we increase the range, we should see our line on the map. There it is, look. We're way off to the south of it at the moment. So we'll combine here some flying. We'll go north. So we'll tell the autopilot to take us directly north. And we'll switch modes in a moment to nav mode and watch what happens for it to navigate us back onto the track. So you can see over here, we're turning north, so we will intercept that course. When we get a bit closer to it, we'll switch back to nav mode on the mode selector over here. So we're on heading mode at the moment, which is why the autopilot is listening to this when it's on the heading setting here. but. As long as heading is down, we can switch the heading mode from heading over to nav. 
So in other words, the autopilot is controlling direction. That's what it really means. You obviously, you often get this kind of um, confusion in terms of terminology in the older aircraft where things have been retrofitted on. Okay, obviously we can't see a thing, so we're having to fly by instruments, which is absolutely fine. We can do that. Just to finish the flight off today, once we've done this bit of flying over to Elstree, let's find somewhere with ILS nearby. We'll fly, once we've got to Elstree, um, we could fly into Northolt, I guess, double back. That would work with the wind, I suppose. Let's have a look, just check the wind on the ground at Northolt. It's 0 to zero, 12 knots. So actually the, on the ground it's coming in from that direction, so the wind is swirling around. Okay, anyway, let's stop this from keep zooming us around. So we were doing, if you think about it, we were saying we were doing a departure from Wickham. And I'm just going to delete that one off. So that's the route that we programmed in. And then we went back the other way, but we'll ignore that for the moment. So we're flying in towards this track to Elstree. So let's see what happens if we turn this on to... If we can get to it. Is there any problem with this? Nav mode. So in combination with that being in nav mode, we need to change the mode of the GPS unit. At the moment it's in VLOC mode, which means it's going to be trying to use the nav radios, but we don't want it to do that. We want it to use the GPS, so we have to press the CDI button. And that changes the mode to GPS. And look, the airplane is turning. It's turning to acquire the route on the GPS. So that's important, yeah? You need to change the CDI mode to reflect what you're trying to do. So nav mode will work both for VOR radios and for GPS. Yeah, and you can see on the map that's exactly what the autopilot is doing, look. It's getting us onto that course in between the two places. Okay, so by the same token, we could fly onto L Street or we could go to VOR mode now. So let's go and fly over to this BPK or the, the Brookmans Park VOR, 117.50. So this should be interesting. So we are going to change the VOR radio. So we have to press the button in to change the focus from COM radio to VOR and we want to tune 117.50 so 117 using the outer ring for the integers and 50 so inner ring for the decimals and then we switch it to be the active frequency and the moment we do that well we don't see it at the moment because this is operating in GPS mode so what we could do so we, the airplane doesn't flail around when we switch this over to VOR mode is we will prepare the heading to carry on going the way we're going. So we'll move the heading marker and we'll switch this back to heading mode. Yeah, so it's now flying for the heading, not for the GPS anymore. Yeah, so it just so happens we were already on that track, so it's just carrying on the heading now and it'll fly over Elstree and it'd be happy about doing that. But what we're going to do is tune in Brookman's Park here. So now we're on, on heading mode, we can change the CDI without the plane changing direction because it's just blindly going to follow the heading. So we can put this back on VOR lock and suddenly this is representing the, um, the nav radio, or sorry, the VOR station that we're tuned into. So we can then use the left hand knob here to move the course and then the course deviation indicator will reflect what we're doing. So if we wanted to fly straight towards the beacon from where we are, we just spin this round and that tells us, relative to our little aeroplane, we need to turn left about 30 degrees, look. So let's let it do that. If we switch this over now on the mode, leave this on VLOC, switch this back to NAV, and the aeroplane is turning left and it's going to get us onto that 60 degree track. So it's going to overshoot slightly and go back to about 50 degrees until that lines up and then it will turn right to 60 degrees again. 
yeah so it's getting us back on the track yeah so you can see that happening so if we go and put a line in here so yeah it was about over here wasn't it so measure distance is that si that's the 63 degree track this is notoriously difficult I'll, I'll just draw it there that's the 60 degree line so from where we are it's probably there measure distance yeah there you go so I'll remove that second line I drew remove so the aeroplane is basically edging back towards that line and then it will straighten up yeah you can see that reflected on this course deviation indicator we're slightly off to the right of the line which is exactly true look so then if we wanted to fly from or if we wanted to fly into this from a different angle say if we actually wanted to fly into it at this angle for example 45 degrees into BPK all we need to do is change the course here so we want to follow the 45 degree line in so look what's happening the plane's turning right we've moved this left but the plane's turning right it's turning right to the 45 degree track into the VOR does that make sense so it's going to intercept so it's flying towards the course deviation indicators indication and then when this starts to sweep in it will straighten up on the 45 degree heading or course I should say here it comes so the plane will start turning left again in a moment and there it goes yeah so there's not much to see outside because it's all clouds so we are using true instrument navigation which is absolutely fine so you can see the plane is edging in towards that 45 degree track so we'll let it fly over the top of BPK and then to go and land in at Luton we will fly out of here and we'll just draw on the map again we'll go out towards the the ILS so we want to leave this VOR station on a heading of 345 so all we will do is change the course to 345 from the VOR so from and to are indicated by which side the arrow is so all we will do essentially is spin the course round to 345 degrees when we get close to the the VOR station you can see the distance over here on the GPS display because it's operating in VLOC mode or VOR mode you get to see the distance of the station you've tuned in so we're down to 2 miles 1.8 miles and again we can cut the corner off it won't hurt it if we say we want to go 345 from the VOR interesting look it doesn't quite understand at the moment that will switch to from in a moment because we're about to go right over the top of the VOR so three four five degrees we wanted there we go so we're over the top the indication has vanished we've lost the signal and there we go from so the arrow, the arrow is now pointing away, so if it, the arrow is pointing towards the course, you're flying to the, the VOR, we're now flying from it. But it's going to try and get the 345 degree line. You can see it's gone off to the right, so this indicates the line is to our left, which absolutely makes sense what we're seeing here, look. We are to the right, so the, the line is to our left. So this will sweep in. The, the aeroplane is automatically turning towards that line, towards the 345 line, or radial from the VOR. And it will start turning right very soon. Here it comes. So it's, it's going to overshoot. It's not going to react fast enough. That's interesting look it really hasn't understood that so this is a limitation of these old autopilots so it's on nav mode it's on VLOC 
it's on the right station but it's got it wrong oh and the sim's now frozen so give it a few seconds to wake up and then we'll just go back to heading mode because we want to fly three four five degrees is the sim going to wake up there it goes it's just woken up so let's go and so it just goes to show these systems are not perfect so we're going to go back to heading mode and the plane is it autopilot still on oh the heading mode had come off when we flew over the top of the VOR I didn't even notice that the heading mode came off because it lost the signal so basically it just put wing leveling on so that's a really good thing to look out for I didn't notice it for you know a few moments then so let's actually let this correct itself let's put it back on nav mode and it should correct itself it'll fly back on an intercept course that's an interesting one wasn't it I'm just going to have to shut the door hang on a second so we'll let it fly the intercept course and it should correct itself this time it will intercept the beam I hadn't even noticed that when we flew over the top of the VOR and it lost its signal it switched off the heading mode because it had nothing to follow okay so we've got it's interesting actually because we've got distance measuring equipment here as well as appearing on the GPS set so this is kind of the old-fashioned way of doing it where you get the miles to the beacon you get your ground speed because obviously it's doing the triangulation of the maths of figuring out the heading you're going so it can can quite easily calculate your ground speed okay so you can see it's straightening itself up so it's getting back on to the three four five degree radial from the VOR station So that was good in a way that that was a total accident that we did that but it was good to show you what can cause what kind of difficulty okay so we're going to switch over now to ILS 109.15 and we'll need to change the course to 254 but before we do that let's put it back on heading mode otherwise when we're making our changes it will start to change direction so we want 109.15 on the radio so we go 109 and one five and we switch that to be the active frequency and we change the course to match the runway direction which is two five four degrees so then we change the course to spin it round to two five about there's about two five four about there okay so we can see here we can spin the heading around so we're going the right kind of direction so let's go and make the aeroplane whoops that was 254 wasn't it and the, the course needs to be 254 yeah so I've got the compass I've got the heading pointing the right direction I haven't got the the course pointing the right the right direction so 254 okay so let's go and put heading mode on now we're going to overshoot, look, we're going right over the centre line now. Yeah, there's your centre line. So let's look outside. We need to descend. This is saying we are above the glide slope at the moment. So I'm going to come off the throttle. We're going to turn off altitude hold. And we're going to dive for the floor. we're going to switch on pitch mode how much pitch will it let us do we'll also go and switch on nav mode it's on nav radio So we're descending at two and a half thousand feet a minute. So we're coming down really quickly. 
and the plane is intercepting the center line. So we're going to get ready to pull the pitch back out as soon as this needle starts coming up. So at the moment it's saying basically we are above the glide slope. So that th there's a three degree imaginary line away from the runway. We can see over here we're only four miles out. So it's debatable whether we'll get down in time. We're down to 2,000 feet. We'll be too fast to land, but I'll at least be able to overfly the runway and show you it. Here we go. So we pull the nose up now. bit more. And you will be surprised if we look out now. There's the runway, which reflects, look, we're slightly off to the right, but it's correcting it. We're pretty much on track vertically. So we'll just cut the throttles back as much as we can. Let the aeroplane continue flying itself. It's going to start turning right to straighten up. I'm not touching anything. All I'm looking after is speed at the moment, and that vertical speed. So we're a little bit high, so let's just correct that, nose down a little bit. And again, you wouldn't actually continue flying at this point on the autopilot. You would disable it, which I'm about to do. So autopilot off. Gear down. Flaps down. Throttles to idle and we're just going to fly it in. So you saw the basics really of operating the autopilot and going between nav mode and heading mode and another day we'll have a look at some of the other modes but for to begin with just doing basic radio navigation I think is enough for most people. There we go. Let's just sit up in the seat so we can see over the nose when it comes up. You always get that stall warning. It's a good one, isn't it? And again, I didn't use the... Um, you can lock the tail wheel in this aircraft so it will roll in a straight line. So I'm manhandling it. Kind of with the rudder and the tail wheel to get us, you know, to steer along the the wrong way so we can lift the flaps again now and we're just gently rolling in so yeah so hopefully that gave you kind of some indication you've got obviously your basic use of roll heading altitude and pitch but you've also got this selector over here that chooses whether you're going to follow the GPS or the nav radio and remember you have to use that CDI button on the the GPS unit to switch between the modes but it's very, very good. Okay, let's just roll in. And parking brakes on. And mixture to lean. Turn the magnetos off. Again, we can go and turn off the pitot heat, we can turn off the uh, the lights, we can turn off the beacon, and then we can just go and switch off the generators and the batteries. Oh, and the, the master switch for the avionics. There we go. So hopefully that was a, a good example for you of basic use of the autopilot in the Beechcraft Model 18. I think it's a great fun aircraft and obviously you saw I made a couple of mistakes there while we were navigating around like when we flew over the VOR the autopilot switched heading mode off automatically which was really useful actually um, it just you know kept on using wing leveling to keep the airplane in a controlled situation and then you saw me using in a, a, a massive hurry which was way over the top really you saw me using pitch mode um, to descend quickly and then to level out onto the glide slope into the runway. So, okay, I'm not going to labour it too much, but that's the basic use of the autopilot. Obviously, there are some more modes over here. So we we didn't use localizer, 
uh, normal or reverse and we didn't use Omni either so we'll have a look at those another time. Okay anyway I'm going to sign off there and I'll see you all again soon.